just make it all uh, what do you call it one big window Woo. hey Vixie <laughs> well this is gonna be interesting it's weird to play something that doesn't have any background music or um, anything like that. Oh, look, you get little flower beds and stuff. Cool, cool. This is one of the pre made maps here. You get all kinds of little water cubes. That, those you don't have to pay for. That free water cubes, who would have thought? Alright. <laughs> Yeah, there's no music or anything playing because obviously we haven't made any music for our little game. So, first we're going to send out <laughs> yeah, free water. What the hell? I'm going to send out my tweets. Hopefully stuff doesn't get messed up too badly. This is my first time trying to stream software rather than a game. You know, just kind of, we're just going to go through the tutorial. Maybe have some fun with the tutorial if we can. I'm not sure if it'll let me change names or goof around or... You can't have any fun in this game. What are you talking about? For some reason, it made me make three exits over this one tree. I, I don't know. We'll be making a new uh, tutorial game here. A new, better tutorial game. Let's see here. Tutorial. Map basics. So let's go with this. Well, actually, I should probably do introductions. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Aaron Romeo Moon Burke, and uh, <coughs> I'm trying something different today. I'm streaming a software rather than a actual video game, and it's uh, because some, you know, some of the viewers kind of want to, kind of want to see me do uh, RPG Maker. I've been talking about making my own RPG game for a while, so how about we uh, walk through some of the tutorial steps at least and see if we can have some fun with those. Um. This is this probably this won't be my game. This will just be the tutorials game. <clears throat> During the tutorial, okay. During the tutorial, if you ex execute a command other than the one the tutorial indicates to, you can go to the help stop tutorial to stop the current tutorial and start over. Intros, yes, I know. Now you're going to see these black boxes kind of come up. I don't know what is up with those. It's like the game or the software is kind of struggling to find the next uh, the next cue card or whatever in the presentation that they're doing. Or they just kind of didn't make the transparent cue card. Okay, so let's make a new project here. Change the name. Okay, change the title. What do we what do we want to call this one? Do they even English? It's a uh it's I believe this is a Japanese software, so they do have a separate software for making games for the Nintendo DS, or at least they did. Vixie is in chat. Uh Vixie, what do you want to call our game? <laughs> we don't even have a concept. Bob. No, that's the name of our main character. We can make our main character Bob. If you want. Or one of the characters that we create, Bob. The other one has to have a completely unusual... Frank. <laughs> okay, Frank. Skip Dave and Bob. <laughs> Another project. A uh, project name I will call... Live Stream Game... Live stream game. <coughs> Copy all them files. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh. The heck, Steam. Sorry, the steam, the steam overlay. <laughs> Any stream, 
Live stream. Any stream user can join your broadcast anytime. Sounds dangerous. Oh yeah, I'm living large here. This stupid, freaking. I will have to turn that off for the next stream. I don't know if I should bother with this stream. Actually, here. Uh, um, um, settings. Because I can't even go to the Steam overlay. Um, um, what the hell? Let's just turn that off. Okay, awesome. No more Steam thingy popping up. Okay, so right side of the screen is the map. On the upper left is the tile palette for the map. On the lower left is the map list. Uh, okay. Oh, map list. There we go. Boop. I think these are like all the different zones that you can put monsters in or something. It's, it's kind of weird. Alright, so... This is the tile s oh this is the map stuff okay all right this is the tile set palette uh select a tile here and it will be drawn on the map map 01 001 <laughs> all right uh let's do a whirlpool now for more detailed explanation on tile set Tile sets click database. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, there we go. Wait. Actors. What if I don't want that actor? What if I want a different actor? We'll come back to this. Oh, yes, we will. Uh, tile sets. There we go. This is the tile set setting screen. The mode is important. In field, you can specify the field type or area type. Let's go back and change our actor. <laughs> okay, class. Hero 1. Warrior? Oh, well, let's just do Hero. Harold? I like the name of that Harold. I'm going to do a nickname. What do we nickname it? Apparently, that just follows. <laughs> Harry. Okay, Harry. Initial level one. Class hero. Profile. Oh, cool. He's got, like, a cute little battler and stuff. I wonder. We can turn him evil. We make him a monster. Nature, we can make him a, like a cute little fairy. Or a cat, or a dog. Class not barred. <laughs> People? Stop me if you want me to change his thing to any of these. Because I can totally and will do that. That's that guy. I don't know if it'll let me change it, but actor three, we can make it like a cute little thing. What do you think, VC? But look like a monster and be misunderstood. Okay, well we've got monsters right here. We can we can make them into a slime. You know, after that really popular anime that just came out, and yes, I do pronounce it anime, anime rather than anime. Like, the day I died and was reincarnated as a slime, I believe is the actual title of that. Which monster do you want it to be, Vixie? Onime? Don't know it. I pick? Okay. Um, that's kind of a pretty skeleton. Let's make him a slime. Monster. Slime! Yeah, there we go. Aww. Lame! No, 
none. We could do none for a battler. Let's just keep him as that then. Fine. Fine. He'll be a slime otherwise though. Was it actually, do we have a blue person? I'm blue da ba dee da ba. That person, these look just exactly the same here. Come on, Dejika. Where's a purple person? Where's a blue person? I just want the bluey. Ah, son of a gun. Eh, we'll just keep him like that. Probably the only thing that I'm able to keep straight. Alright, so now we've got our real hero going. Alright, this tile set, this is the tile set setting screen. The mode is important. In field, you can specify the field type or area type. Where is our... Area type, field type, area type, field type. Alright, click OK. Oh yeah! Why is this still popping up? Steam! <laughs> you passed blue people just before purple. Already confusing, I don't see it. Oh. Okay, so... In map mode, you can draw your map. In event mode, you can place events. So, bup, bup, bup. So that's for drawing your map. This is for placing events. Alrighty. If you can't see the little toolbar at the very top, I'm flipping back and forth between that. This is not an actual tutorial, by the way. I don't advise, actually, you know. Just buy, just buy the uh, software and, and follow the actual tutorial without goofing around with stuff. Alright. So we're currently in event mode, actually. We're currently in event mode. You can edit events. Events will further will be further explained later next. You can zoom in and out of the map. Give it a try. Huh. Ah. Ah. Well that's about as hard as big as you can go. Zoom out to shrink the map. There we go. <laughs> did you already do the tutorial? I did part of the tutorial. I did part of the tutorial. <clears throat> Every time I see this, I'm like, what the hell is Frank? Press the control re key and roll the center wheel of the mouse to magnify and shrink the map. Oh my god! Th I love it. He's just like looking at you all terrified, going, ah! What are you doing? Uh, I'm pressing the center wheel of the map. Move the mouse to scroll the map when the entire map is not inside the window. Yeah, I'm pressing it and it's not working. There's there's a few flaws, I think. Eh. Let's just cheat. There we go. To resize the map. Or click actual size to rest the map size. I think that's supposed to be resize the map. Or maybe rest it at an actual size. Our hero. <laughs> Heart. Let's have him attacked by rabid kittens. Not yet. We have to go through so many other tutorials before we can even start working on battlers. Alright, click actual size. Okay, whatever. Uh, now we're done with map zooming. Next is an explanation of the map tree on the lower left. Oh, goody! Right click to change the map name. Ah! Click edit. Uh, field map. Oh, cool. 
sure rabbit kittens will be part of the tutorial eventually. Next we will place tiles. The cat's going crazy trying to pounce on stuff that he can't get to. Next we will place tiles from the map from the tile palette. Or tiles on the map from the tile palette. Alright. Let's go design our map. Click tile set B. Click a town tile. Uh, click to put a town. Wow, that was easy. We just built a town out of nowhere. Click a ta cave tile. Alright, there we go. Alright, next we will create a town and cave maps. This time we'll use a sample map. Right click to loading town map. Load. Normal town. Alrighty. We actually have to kind of do this the right way. <laughs> Otherwise the rest of the tutorial is kind of screwed up. Right click to load a click cave map. Cave map. Uh, so let's see here. We got this one, that one, that one, that one. A floating temple. Look at that. A fishing village, an oasis, a slum. A mountain village that looks like a slum. A nomad camp. Ooh, demon castle. Let's do that one. Where is the cave map? I... Uh, ice cave? Cursed cave? Lava cave. Small town, big city. Alright. We've goofed around enough. Stone cave. <laughs> uh, next we'll link each map in the field using events so they can be entered and exited freely. out here. Ah, okay. Next. Click map to edit the field map. Alright, click event. Right click the town. Uh, event transfer. Click the location. Click normal town. Click the entrance of the town. Alright, so that's going to be our entrance this time. Hopefully this doesn't get messed up. Click OK. Alright, click Normal Town. Alright, click the exit of the town below. It has no exit! It's all walls here. What the hell? Alright, well, I think I'm just gonna do what I did last time and put it next to a tree. Right click at the exit of the town below. You exit through a tree. Quick event, transfer. Woo. Click location. Click field map. Click the town. Click OK. Alright. Click Copy. Right click a exit of the town to fill the exit. Or 
exit tile of the town to fill the exit. Alright, we'll just do, uh, on the other side of the tree. Haste. Right click the remaining exit tile of the map. Let's go over here. And paste. There we go. Click field map. Right click the cave. Transfer. This is riveting stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Your game is going to be impossible and frustrating. <laughs> oh, gee, people will never find that. <laughs> <laughs> Vixie is uh, having a fun time, I think. Click location. Click stone cave. Click the entrance of the cave below. Oh, here we go. Click OK. There. <laughs> Click stone cave. Right click the exit of the cave below. Um, 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 hmm. Let's go right here. Transfer. Field map. All right. Click the cave. Click OK. There we go. Now we're done placing our transfer events. Next, we will determine the player's initial position. Uh, normal town. All right. A tile on the road. All right. I'm actually going to put them right here. <laughs> so when you enter your home, do you use the door? But when you exit, you leave through a window? <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. Alright, so I need to find starting position player. <laughs> Click to save the project. Click play test. That's the end of the first tutorial. Yeah, the thing is that I don't know if I try to put the exit in the intro. <laughs> that off. That's really annoying. There we go. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> why do I hate you on sub bookmark deleted? Well, that was like really loud. It shouldn't have been that loud. Shouldn't have been that Your ears, my ears. Alright. This is totally not gonna suck. Look at that, we already have all these followers now. Whee! Alright, let's go this way. Oh shit, I think we fucked up. <laughs> wow. Oh, there we go. That's the entrance to town. We should have probably uh, moved these down here. So actually, I wonder if I can cut and paste those. Alright. Why did it all 
logo black I was looking for the sound but it was in a tree you obviously fucked up alright so let's see here hmm let's see here yes safe changes to the game Please don't be loud again. My ears can't take that. Thank you. I hate you, game. I hate you already. This game sucks. Oh, cool. So what if I go... Ah. Well, our town also has a secret exit by a tree. And another secret ex exit by the same tree. There we go. <laughs> Works like a charm. Whee! I guess we should probably go over here, too. Oh, yeah. Harold! Alright, there we go. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of want to keep that exit there. Just to mess with people. <laughs> <laughs> Normal exit. <laughs> Harold, Harold has more friends than I expected. Yes, he does. He's not to be underestimated, our Harold. Look how fast he just scoots along the ground. Okay, let's continue with the next tutorial. Alright, event basics. Dialogue. Sweet, we get to write dialogue. Alright. You have a project. We finished in step one, yes. Loading. Loading is step one project. Open. There we go. Project loaded. Good. I would have been kind of pissed if we'd lost all of our progress so far. <laughs> now we will start the tutorial. Character and conversation development is done using events. This time we'll create a character event. Next. Ah. Normal town. First, determine where the character will be placed. The coordinates are shown on this taskbar. Okay, so... Wait, where? Okay, I see. The, there's the coordinates for at least that square. You know, place her on the crossroads near the town entrance. Let's place her at 1933. 19... There we go, 1933. Uh, check the coordinates while clicking on the map and find 1933. We found it, alright. Uh, double click on that position. The event editor will launch. There we go. Yes, speaks the poorly acted dialogue. First, let's choose her appearance. Double click this, this image. Oh, goody. This time we will pick an adult woman as example. Click actor one. Select the rightmost woman from the top row. Once you've selected her, press OK to confirm. Man, what if I don't want that one? What if I 
find it. What, what if I want a different one? Oh, squash slime. There you go. Evil. We can do evil. We can also do more monster. Just follow the tutorial. It might matter later. Yeah, we should probably do that. Alright, let's go with her. Once the priority has changed from below characters to same as characters, or notice the uh, priority has changed from below characters to same as characters. If priority is set to below, then it will display under the player. If it's the same, they won't overlap. Well, that's, let's name the event Villager 1. Yeah, let's not change this. <coughs> Event names are not required, but they are useful when making references from other events in this tutorial. We'll give real examples using names later. I'll just put a note in here. Tutorial. Alright. Check that the trigger is set to action button. Player touch, event touch, auto run, parallel. Okay, next. This is the condition required to activate the event. If set to action button, it will activate when the button is pressed. If it's player touch, it will activate when touched. Now let's set the contents. Double click the first line in the contents. Quote unquote. Alright, make sure you're on page one. No, oh god, no. There we go. Look at all this stuff. Pick the wrong one. It said the rightmost from top row. You can't follow instructions. You already did change it. <laughs> well, no, that's the right one. It's, it's the same for that whole block of people that I just clicked on. It's the same no matter which of that block you pick. Ow, ow! Stop that. Alright, so first we'll, we'll do the text and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I can remember. Alright. Show text. Fine. Click show text. Uh, type villager on the first line and hello on the second line. Villager. Boop. Hello. Slime ball. Exclamation point. Alright. Preview. <laughs> ah, slime racial slurs, apparently. Villager. No, it says villager colon, because the villager is actually speaking. See? Villager colon inside the quotation marks. Now, there are things called control characters that allow you to do various th things such as change text color and size. Let's try displaying vi villager in a different color. Rewrite the text as slash c villager or slash c bracketed to villager uh, change the color of villager basically so let's go there we go c villager and then go over here There we go. Make sure the control characters are written in single byte characters. Change hello to hello slash in. I know what's coming up next, so I can do this. There we go. Test. 
request. Preview your text. Hello, Slimeball Herald. <laughs> Makes you do formatting codes. Yep. <laughs> Villager, hello. I clearly don't look like I should. Because my creator's a bit special. This RPG maker is confusing and kind of crappy. <laughs> oh, this... <coughs> I got this on sale too. This is uh this software it normally runs at about eighty dollars for this. Alright, so text between C is now red. Also N has been replaced by the name of the main character. This is an example of the effects of control characters. Close the preview after checking it. There are other control characters as well. Actually here. I should. The creator is a bit special. There we go. Oh shit. That went all over the place, didn't it? <laughs> Gotta have to get the uh, punctuation in there. There we go. Now we're done with text display. Click OK to set the text. There we go. <laughs> Villager's rude. Yep. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> next we'll show cho choices. Uh, double click the next empty line after the text. Um... First, we'll open show text once more to write a question. Uh, input the question text. Uh, wow. It's like all kinds of stuff popped up there. Input the question. Oh, there you go. Control characters. Uh, input the question text. Something like, please get rid of the beasts in the neighboring cave. Will do. When you're done entering text, click OK. Click OK to confirm. There we go. Uh, double click the lowest empty line in contents. OK. Show choices. You can choose up to uh, six choices, but this time we'll just do yes and no. And there are other options, but they're fine. Okay. We've got this. We've kind of improved upon them a little bit. Now fields labeled when yes and when no have appeared. You've described the event for each case within these fields. You can describe the event for each case within these fields next. Now for an explanation about balloon icons. These are music notes, hearts, and other symbols that display above the event. This time we'll use them in place of dialogue. Next. When yes. Double click the line underneath that. Page 2 event commands. Show balloon icon. Choose this event for the character and heart balloon for... Choose this event. Alright, this event for the character and heart for the balloon icon. Okay, there we go. Alright, check 
off, wait for completion. All right, click OK and it will be set. There we go. Double click the line under window. <laughs> rude villager is rude. <laughs> Show balloon icon. This event and cobweb for a bl for a balloon icon. Just do anger. All right. We don't have to wait for completion. Okay. You can add dialogue after a balloon icon, but even if you don't, the sentiment should be clear. Click OK. Oh, wait. Alright, okay. Now steps two preparations are complete. Save the project! Save it! And now we get to play test it. <laughs> <coughs> Tutorial wins, okay. <laughs> My creator is a bit special. Please shut the hell up. Okay. <laughs> it works! It works! <laughs> Harold is a badass. <coughs> All right. All right, so I'll show you Vixie. This is what she was talking about, or they were talking about. This whole block here is the same character. So I could click on any of these. So instead of clicking on this one, let's go to this one. So she starts out looking like that. So she'll just start out with her back towards us instead. Actually, here. Come on, play test, please. Don't crash. Wow. Ah, there we go. New game. <laughs> but it did specify the row. Um, I'll show you what row they were talking about. There you go. See? Because it's all the same. It just depends on their starting. So these are the rows. These. So you have this row and that row. Well, I don't know. Maybe, you should, maybe they meant this one. Like right up there. I'll start her with her back towards us though. There we go. It's all good. Uh, it's okay. It didn't matter much. So now what? Now we move on to the next tutorial. Okay. Event transfer. Alrighty. Do you have the project we finished from step two? Yes. Load. Project loaded. Okay, next. Now we'll start the tutorial. Select normal town from the map tree. Okay. In this step, we will learn how to move NPC events. So basically, we get to make people move. Event T... <laughs> so now what? When do we get to a TPK? Event TPK. When TPK? Balloon heart. <laughs> there are two ways to move an event. You can set autonomous movement or use the event command set movement route. We'll deal with the former this time. Uh, let's set autonomous movement for the character we create in step two. Uh, to do this, we will first find where the character is placed. Next. Click the event searcher. 
character we want to look for is called Village One. Click event name. Enter villager one. I don't remember this. Enter next. When you're done, click search. Their position will be shown. 1933. Okay. Well, that's where we left them before. As you can see, a benefit of naming your events is that you can easily search for them. Click close. Well, screw you, tutorial. I knew that. Double click the villager on 1933 and open up the and open the event. Alright, here we'll set the autonomous movement. You can specify frequency and speed, but we'll leave those how they are for now. There we go. Uh, select random from type. Random. Now the settings are complete. Okay, click and it will be set. Save the project and play test. Check that the villager is moving randomly. There she is. Yes, she is moving randomly. All over the place. Look at that. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm tired. Well, she is moving randomly. Uh, when playtest is over, let's move on. Yes, please. Uh, next, we'll make a character that repeatedly moves in the same places. In the same places. As an example, let's make a character that walks around the statue in the center of town. Click under the statue in the center of town. Make sure the coordinate is 1933 or uh, 23. Oh wow, I clicked it right away. 1923 next. And open the event. Ah! Black screen. Stop black screening me. Okay. Act 2. Pick the image of the woman facing to the right at the bottom. Anything to the right at the bottom right. Huh. There we go. But this isn't the bottom right. This is behind. <sighs> Still listening. Okay. Alright. Whatever. We'll just do this. Alright, statue circular. Oh, double click the first line contents. Alright, show text. Alright, I'm circling the statue. Certainly in the statue because I'm nuts. We'll make this event walk uh, the perimeter of the statue next. Let's uh, first let's change the movement speed and frequency. Set the speed to four normal. It's right now it's at three two times slower. Normal. Set the frequency to five highest. It's at three normal, so five highest. Now we'll set her to walk around the statue. Set the type to custom. Custom. <coughs> route. Uh, click the route or route, and you can set the movement route. All right. So if you click a movement command on the right, it will be added to the list on the left. So we've got a whole list of stuff. The events entered are added here. Right click 
when you want to delete or insert an event next. Add these events in the following order. So move right, move up, 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 move le uh, left, left, move down, 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 move right. Hmm. Next. Let's make sure that repeat movements is checked. Now she'll circle the statue endlessly. Do not check off skip if cannot move. We don't want her route, her route to change on us. Okay. All right. Okay. And save. And now we get to play test that. <clears throat> Come on, RPG Maker. I believe in you. There you go. Because I'm nuts. Yep, there she goes. Just round and round and round and round. She can't stop. Won't stop. All right, so that's working. Uh, is the event working properly in the playtest? Oh yes, it is working all the well. Well done, this is the end of step three. Next, tutorial ends. All right, let's go on to the next tutorial. We're learning so much. Holy crap, we'll actually be this is the last tutorial I did before, like, starting to stream this, so... <laughs> a fate she thoroughly deserved. <laughs> Says Vixi. <coughs> Alright, so... Event Transfer 1. Or Event Transfer 2, sorry. Like I said, this is the last tutorial I went to through before. Alright. During a tutorial, if you execute a command other than the one... Okay, whatever. It's the same thing they always tell us. Yes, please. Load, I guess. Please stop having a black s square over my screen. Hey! Hey! Stop making everything black. To wait for this to clear up. There we go. Project loaded. Good. Uh, in this step, we will learn to make an event move. Uh, using the event command, set movement root. Or route. First, let's make a new character event. In the northern road of town, click near the middle of the long path that runs from left to right at the T junction. There we go. Uh, find 1910. Hey, I found it. And double click it. Alright, set the image. Click people. Click the right facing woman, second from the left in the bottom row. So these are the rows here. You've got two rows. And then the right facing woman. So and this 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 here is second from the left. So this whole square of sprites, that's what they're talking about. There we go. All right, moving lady. All right, double click contents. Yeah, I think I need to drink some water. I'm getting a uh, flimmy. All right, show text. Uh, I'm moving four steps to the right now. of assholes. <laughs> Keep firing, assholes. <laughs> Up until now just uh, has just been a review. Now we're going to set movement route. 
Double click the blank line. The blank line. Switch to page two. Alright, movement route. Woo. Uh, movement target is closed, set to player. Please change this to event. Or this event, I should say. Check off skip if cannot move. Remove the check from wait for completion. Set the movement route as follows. Right, 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 right. One, two, three, four. There we go. Make sure that there are four instances of move right in the list. All right. Click OK to set the event. Now the event preparation is ready. Let's change the player's initial position to make playtesting easier. After clicking a few squares away from the event, right click. Select set starting position player. There we go. First we'll save the project. Then conduct a playtest. I'm moving four steps to the right now. Move! Alright, see if we stand in her way, she won't, she won't move. See, she can't move. <laughs> so she's right to be angry. How far left will she move? All the way to the left until she hits a wall. There we go. We chased her all the way to the edge of the map. <laughs> Get fucked, rude villager, says Vixie. Alright, once you're done, there's some more explanation. More? If the player character talks to her from her, their right or the path is blocked her movement will be stopped this is the effect of skip if I if cannot move uh, could you play a test again and make sure that this is working no next we'll make two events move simultaneously next let's make a male NPC event parallel to the woman double click the coordinate 19 9 above moving a lady Hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright, moving, dude. Select people one. Oh, hey. That's a, we wanted this guy. Believe me, you want that guy. page one show text I'm going to move with that lady um, what else should he say This one will be full, <laughs> full of spelling errors. Every little thing is so complicated. Is Unity this complicated? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, look at all the crappy Unity games that come out. Actually, now we'll make it. This is uh, Randy says this is a lot easier than Unity. Now we'll make it so the man moves with the lady when you talk to her. Double click on the moving lady. 
we had an event to make the man move in the same way as the lady after her event, it'll look like they're walking together. But it's a pain to do the setup all over again. Here we will take advantage of copying and pasting. Ah, my favoriteest things in the world. Click set movement root. So it's selected. While it's selected, right click and choose copy. Copy pasta. Now right click in the last empty line, paste. Well, edit the event command you just pasted. Right click on and select edit. Edit. Change this event to moving dude. Alright. Okay, and it will be set. Okay. Save. And then play test. Make sure the man moves with the woman when you talk to her. Also check to see if you block one of their paths that they will no longer be lined up. <laughs> Vixie's me a spaghetti machine. That looks like a rather tasty spaghetti machine. Copy this pasta that. Alright. Yep. Get away from my wife. So if you stop her, it'll stop him. He kind of stops permanently. He's just kind of sitting over here. Actually, let's go around this way. Oh. The queue goes. Yeah, they desynced. Which is kind of what... If you block their path, they do that. Okay. Run them right into a wall. No way for you to go. Ha ha ha. You're stuck there forever. Until I reset the game. <laughs> and they were never together again. That, that, that. <laughs> Alright, so let's, uh, once you've done with the playtest, we have a quick note. Although this time we remove the check from wait for completion, when you want to move after... When you want one to move after the other, check it off. However, sometimes when you use wait for completion, the path is and the path is blocked by an obstacle, you may no longer be able to progress in the game, so be careful. That's it for this explanation. Well done. You have created a being. We're we're moving up in the world. Alright, so let's go on to the... Let's go on to our last tutorial. Ooh, yeah, this one. Conditional branching part one. You thought this stuff was complicated. Yes. Yes, I do. Stop putting a black box over everything. Ah, damn it. Well done. <laughs> you have now completed... How to introduce game breaking movement desync bugs. <laughs> Open. Project loaded. Alright. In this step, we'll learn how to create events using switches and conditional branching. Click normal town. We're going to make three people lined up horizontally. A location will be. Right side of stench shoe in the center, 2522. Alright. 
first we're going to make an event where an NPC will give you a potion once. Double click 2322 to create an event. Alright, Potion Woman. Actor 3. Uh, click a downward facing woman. Set this image. Let's make the contents. Double click the first empty line. Uh, first, let's make a message saying an item has been received. I'll give you a potion. Of doom. All right. Next, we process the receipt of the potion. Double click the blank line. All right. Change items. Uh, click the item. Click that the item is potion. The operation is increase, and the operation is constant at one. And click OK. Okay, potion, ooh, magic water, dispel herb, stimulant. Ah, oh, increase one. All right, constant, okay. Now, if we keep it like this, you can get potions whenever you talk to her. Yay! Now we're going to add a switch that contains the information that a potion was received. Double click the blank line. Control switches. <coughs> this time we'll use, ah! Stop going blink. Stop blinking out. Stop going black screen. What, what is wrong with you? This time we'll use the first switch. You can name switches so they're easy to distinguish. Click the switch. Ah, click the first option in the list one. Enter the name. Get potion. There we go. Click OK. Alright, make sure the switch is set to single on one, get potion, and that operation is set to on. Then click OK. Alright, we'll use this switch to create a reaction for the NPC after they've given a potion. Next, click New Event Page. Alrighty. Okay, the second page will set up just like page one. All right, we have to go back. We have to put in her little sprite. Downward facing sprite, okay. Switch. All right, get potion. Oh, stop that freaking software. It went black again. I just have to sit here and wait for it to stop being black. A black screen, I should say. Should clarify anyway. There we go. Make sure the switch number is set to 001. Get potion. Okay. Alright, next we'll create content after she's given us a potion. Alright. Use that potion wisely, okay? Okay. I'm uh, not giving, giving you another, unless you do something for me. Actually, no, let's just do that. What happens if I do this? Oh, cool. Press OK. Now we're done setting up this event. There will be a detailed explanation about event appearance conditions and pages. You can create multiple pages for events and when their conditions are fulfilled the event will change to the appropriate page. 
If there are multiple pages when a condition is met, the page with the highest number will be executed. If no condition is specified, that page will always be considered to have its condition met. Um, on the other hand, if two or more conditions are specified, the page will be considered to have its conditions met when all conditions are met. Let's consider our current case. When switch 1 is on, the condition of page 2 is met. And the event is changed to the page 2 event. Okay. Switch 1 is on, the event will be the page 1 event, which has no condition set. Yeah, there we go. It's not on. When switch, when switch 1 is not on. Okay, so you have to make sure to turn this on and off. Or turn this on, whatever. That's all. It's pretty important. So would you like to read the explanation again? No. I've read it like a billion times right now, and it's still just as confusing. Alright. Next, we're going to create someone whose dialog changes depending on whether or not they've gotten a potion. Double click 2522. Name the event Potion Judge. him facing downward. Okay, and set image. Alright, double click. This time we're using, we're going to use a conditional branch to determine whether or not the player has gotten the potion. Double click the first line in contents. <laughs> Alright. Conditional branch. Check that the switch is checked off and that get potion is set to on. Alright. Check off uh, create else branch. There we go. Click OK and it will be set. Alright. Uh, we'll enter the dialog for when you have a potion and for when you don't. First, let's do it for when you have one. Double click. Alright, show text. Uh, use potions wisely in this dialog after you've gotten a potion. can overdose. <laughs> ah, juvenile humor. Alright, let's see here. There we go. Alright, double click under the line else. Show text. You need potions if you're going adventuring. before you've gotten a potion. Okay, slit text to go okay. Else. Potion is on, okay? Uh, so now we're done setting up this event. Switches record conditions such as completing actions and are useful for divining processes. Also, it's possible to achieve the same results without conditional branching by increasing event pages like you did with Potion Woman. You could also use conditional branching with Potion Woman. Uh, when images or other conditions need to change, you'll have to use event pages. Uh, 
but in cases like this, you are free to choose. All right. That was a pretty simple one. <laughs> Next, we'll make an event where you lose a potion. Double click two spaces right of the man. 27, 22. Okay, potion beggar. Software, stop doing weird stuff. People won. Ah, I went to black again. A black screen. Painted black. Click the t kid um, facing downward from the top row. There we go. Click and set image. Alright, let's enter the content. Double click the first line. All right, show text. Give me a potion. There we go. Now I'll enter the process that will forcibly take a potion from the player. So basically, he's a potion thief. He steals your potions. So next line. Uh, change items. Constant one decrease as the operation. Okay. Now the process for losing a potion has been made. If you don't have one, nothing will happen. Okay for the event. Save. After you get a potion, it'll be lost when you talk to the kid, but potion one won't give you any more. Uh, keep this in mind and conduct a playtest. Back. Oh, Vixie just missed everything. Well, if you're listening, I guess. Alright, so let's go down and talk to this person. Uh, you need potions if you're going adventuring, or a good healer who doesn't fall asleep during battle. I'll give a potion. I'll give a potion of doom! Okay. So, double click. Item. We now have a potion! I'm an key item. Okay. Alright. Oh, shit. I accidentally closed the game. Actually, let's go. Give me a potion, bitch. We don't have a potion. Right now. Alright, talk to him. Potions if you're going adventuring. Or a good healer who doesn't fall asleep. Alright. Talk to her. I'll give a potion of doom. Item. I need to right click to navigate all these menus instead of closing the... <laughs> Use potions wisely, or you can overdose. Alright. Give me a potion, bitch. Alright, now we look. And our potion has been taken by the potion thief. Freaking potion thief. And... She should not... Use that potion wisely, okay? I'm not giving another. Oh, wow, that kind of cut off there. Yep, and sh true to her word, she did not give us another potion. <laughs> I had to be in the kitchen briefly. Oh, yeah, he was listening. Okay, good. Classic Barry. You, you know instantly who I'm talking about. If you know anything about the, pre the other live streams we do. Were you able to fully check everything? Did you open the menu screen and check to see if you had a potion? Yes. Just again, check our other conditions. No. Well done. We'll um, move on to step two. To the next step, part two. Yes, this is not over yet. This is not over yet. Tutorial ends. 
We'll continue to the next tutorial and then we'll hang it up for the day. Uh, part two. I think I got down to treasure and self switches. Oh, and then uh, next stream we can create shops. Um, event moving notice move notice board moving rock door database basics. Oh wow, that sounds like it's gonna be fun. Damaging floors, healing and saving, symbol encounters, enemy character boss settings, create creating an ending, title and plugins. Alright. So not too many things, not too many things to do. Unless you guys are pretty much uh done with watching. Yeah, let's go and let's go ahead and, and continue on with this one. We have the time. This will probably only be about three uh, episodes long at this point. Maybe two. Open. Alright. Good. Now we'll start the tutorial. We'll change up the previous step and learn more about conditional branching. Step 5 is we use the switch to determine if conditions were met. However, it's also possible to turn if the player has a potion or not without using switches. Let's try for ourselves. Double click potion women. woman. Wow, son of a bitch. Come on, software. Stop going to a black screen. It's like the um, software is already having a hard time. Go to page two. I'm going to change the appearance condition from switch to item. Remove the check from switch. Okay. Uh, check item. Make sure it is set to potion. It will be fulfilled when you have the item in question. Oh, so it's like a uh, self switch. No. Okay. Open page one. Uh, now we no longer need the control switch, uh, so we'll delete it. This can be done by right-clicking and selecting delete. Delete. Now we've set her to give you a potion any time that you don't have one. Click OK and it will be set. Alright, potion. Ah, okay. Next, double click the man who judges whether or not you have a potion. We'll change the condition in the conditional branch. Right click and select edit. Okay. So click the tab for the fourth page and open it. Check off item. Uh, please make sure the item is set to potion. There we go. Click OK and set the changes. Now the condition is the party processes, possesses a potion. Uh, now we're done editing the event. OK. OK. Uh, breaking over this. OK, cool. Everything looks good. Save. And we'll play test this again. And then after three episodes, we'll have an epic RPG we can play for years. <laughs> Kappa. <laughs> It'll be no, the greatest. Episodes, have <laughs> we'll have a town after three episodes. It'll be the simplest RPG ever. Oh, shit. I forgot one of my exits was over there. Let's go back in. Whee! No, don't accidentally run over that. Oh, actually, we have to go here. I'll give a potion of doom. I still like that. I don't care what anyone else says. Use that potion wisely, okay? I'm not giving another. So 
he took our potion. Or a good healer who doesn't fall asleep during battle. Yeah, we got a potion now. Our tingly noises are annoying enough. A town of potion thieves! <laughs> says Beeksy. Alright, once you're done with the play test, here's some more explanation. We learned that by making a condition that generates items, <coughs> we can perform different actions when the than a switch. Making a condition that generates items, you can perform different actions than a switch. To create a situation where once you get an item, you can never get it again, we use switches. And for a situation where you can re receive the item continually, it's best to branch using items. There are so many other conditions you can specify, so please try them out for yourself to learn about them. Uh, but the one you will have the most opportunities to use is the switch. Well, that was an easy tutorial. Jeez. I don't know. I'm pretty much done for this time, I think. What do you guys think? Do you want me to keep going? As I sit here and sniffle and sniffle and sniffle some more. <laughs> I'm done for life, says Vixi. <laughs> All right, everyone. <coughs> this has been Erin Romeo Moon Burke uh, trying out something different for once. This has been... Uh, I've been playing um, RPG Maker MV. You can find it on Steam for around, I think, seventy to eighty dollars off sale. I, I would highly recommend checking out Humble Bundle or some other place where they sell like Steam keys like that for for a little bit cheaper. I was able to get this uh, along with a lot of additional stuff for I think about thirty-five bucks. It had a bunch of add-ons already onto it instead of just the bare software. So. <laughs> Mixy says, but if it was worth, but it was worth seeing for a change. All right, I might still just continue on with the rest of these tutorials uh, for the live stream series just to finish them up. Um, well, it won't take that long. I think we could probably even finish up the rest of these in one other session, live stream session. So just just to do, you know, just to do something. Uh, a little bit different. Um, and I, I don't know, I enjoyed it. So let me uh, bring up OB OBS, please. There we go. <laughs> so if you enjoyed the live stream series, it's a change of pace, that's for sure. Uh, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitch, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, or the Steam community. Uh, you can also donate via Patreon and uh, Streamlabs or PayPal, whichever. It's all pretty cool. I just do this for the fun of it, so just to have something else to do instead of just going to work. All right, and thanks for joining me. Um, uh, hopefully we'll be uh, back tomorrow, I believe, for the Diablo stream, and then nothing on Wednesday or Thursday, I don't think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> subs get a lovely ear and dab. <laughs> As Vixie can demonstrate. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will be back on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with more streams. Alright, everybody, have a good holiday weekend. I will see you all tomorrow for Diablo 3. And if not, uh, we'll see you on Friday then, hopefully. Have a good night. Bye.